To begin with, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start and open up a new file. So you're going to want to make your template the same FPS as your default clips. Now the way to check the FPS on your clips is go find your clip. Once you found your clip, right click it, click properties, go into details, and here you'll see the frame rate. Now this is what you're going to want to match with. So most games will be about 60 FPS and they'll almost always be 1920 by 1080. So here for the template, just switch it to 60 FPS and click OK. So now we have a blank canvas. We open up to media and then import your clip. So in my case, I've already got a montage or an edit. So all that I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and turn off the audio. It's not really needed and it just makes it a lot easier to work with and you can always turn it back on when you go into your exporting. Now all that I'm going to do is I'm going to save and call it whatever you want. Now just before we begin, I'm going to pull back this blue bar. So then it lines up with the end of our edit. Because this blue bar shows how far we're going to export, so you don't want that all the way out here because it will render all the way to two minutes. And you don't want that because it's a waste of time and there's no point and you're just going to get black screen for uh, the remainder of the time. Okay, since mine's an edit, I really want to keep most of my edits towards the forefront of the video so then that way you want them to see as many edits and transitions as you can so then you can keep them watching for longer. So essentially all that we're going to want is to choose exactly where we're going to put the effect. So in this case I've chosen to put on Bandit's Gun. So Bandit's Gun has got uh, quite a bit of uh, highlighted colours. So in this case the gold is quite bright so then that way I think we could go ahead and put some glow on that and it looked uh, quite good. Okay, now that I've played the clip, I'm just going to select where I want to start and where I want to finish. So, first I'm going to start with where I want the clip to finish. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to slice to the right of where I want it to finish. So, typically I want it to finish here because this is a clear frame. So, I'm going to move it to the right. So basically anything to the right, this frame, is what we're seeing. And we don't really want this frame because it's a little bit blurry. Um, that's because it's going into a transition. So now this is the end point. Now we need the start point. So after we get this kill, that's when I'm going to have the start point. I think I'm going to have it when these pieces are being shown. So about there. So just before we make this into a composite shot, we're just going to go ahead, control C, control V, create a new track. So we duplicate it basically. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and mute that. I know we already have audio one muted, but in this case it would end up doubling over when we do play this and it would sound terrible. And I'm going to make composite shot on the top one. I'm going to go ahead and make a mask here. And once we've done that, we can find the other section. So basically you just want to highlight these gold sections. As you can see it's it's pretty rough at the minute. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to change up the shape and then the feathering. Okay now I've got it roughly how I want it. We're going to do the other one. So the idea with these masks is you want them to blend, you don't really want the full outline, you don't want to go with it with how I usually do my masks, I usually use this uh, this freehand mask and basically point to point, however I think that takes way too long and it's so much easier, you get the same effect. It makes it a lot easier, it's a lot less time consuming and the effect stays pretty much the same. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add a glow effect. So this glow effect is what makes this gun uh, almost 
become brighter and that's how it highlights it to the audience when they're watching it. So as you can see you can change the intensity. So if I go back into the editor it should change now. So this is basically all that it is. Uh, as you scroll across it doesn't fully uh, track with the gun yet. So we will be doing that later. It won't as much be tracking but rather you move the move the points to follow the the contours of the gun. So for now I'm not going to focus on the glow, I'm just going to turn it off for now. However, I will go back on to change that up. We're just going to change the the positioning of the mask first. We're going to need to position that correctly first, and then after that we can tamper with the glow. So now that we've done the shape, we can close those and open up the transform. So I'm going to go ahead and make keyframes for position and scale. So the forward and back frame by frame buttons is the full stop and the comma. So in this case, the full stop is the next frame, and the comma is the previous frame. So once we've done our keyframes, we're going to go ahead and click next frame. And then we're going to make a keyframe for the position. So we're just going to match it with the gold of the gun. Okay, so easy as that. All that you do is you just move and then click full stop, then move, then click full stop, move, then click full stop. And then typically, it now follows it. Now we're going to do the same thing for the mask, the second mask. So scale and position, and then click your... Obviously you can click these ones, however, I think it's easier to multitask because rather than clicking that then moving it and then having to go down it's so much easier just by holding on to your keyboard and just clicking the next frame and previous frame buttons uh, on your keyboard so if your mask is giving you a bit of a hard time usually you just need to zoom in a little bit more and then it makes it a lot easier to move it around so there you go I moved it into place then we click next frame move it into place and then next frame. So of course you do need to click the keyframe button before you do this otherwise what actually happens is if I show you with the opacity here if I change it and then move it again then change it it's not actually keeping the previous setting that we did so let's just change that back to 100 Then let's say we put in we press this button here and make a keyframe let me do that and we lower it it changes it Okay, and it saves the 100 that we had before. So that's why you do need to push these. Okay, so again, we click next frame. We move it across. Next frame again. Move it across. And then we keep on repeating this until we basically tracked most of the gun. Okay, now that we've come to the end, we can go ahead and turn on the glow again and just see how it looks on the editor. So we go back to our editor and we just watch it back now. Okay, so the tracking's worked out pretty well. We still need to do the one in front. Uh, and like I said, we will change up the glow because here it's gone and done most of the glow in red. That's mainly because the intensity is really high. I pretty much want that in a more gold slash yellow we can change that by changing the uh, the type of uh, glow it is so the blend here you can change it but like I said we'll be doing that later just because right now we've got other things to focus on so again we turn that off and then we make this new mask here so it is a lot more like this sort of shape however I'm gonna keep it larger so I'm just going to go ahead, copy the first mask we did, and then I'm just going to go ahead and remove the position. So we make another keyframe for uh, for the position. Move it up front. So in this case, there is nothing yet up front. So 
I'm just going to go ahead and keep on moving it until it's revealed. There you go. We're probably going to have it glowing about here. I'm going to get it to glow there. I'm going to go ahead and move it all the way down and out of sight. Usually you can just turn the opacity down. But in this case, I, I want it down here. So as you can see, the thing with the keyframes is... If you have one point here, then another point there, what it's going to do is it's going to move there automatically. And we don't want that. We don't want it coming across the screen. We don't want them to see that. So all that we're going to do is we're going to keep on moving it back down. Okay, now it's at the spot we want it. We can now track. So just repeat the same steps that we did here for the transform. Click the next frame button and then move. Uh, next frame button again then move same thing here so now that we've come to the end we can look at the editor once we turn on the glow of course so it's got a good spread I think the good thing about this type of gun skin uh, is because these browns here they're, they're not very bright so the glow doesn't really span that far into it even though the mask is this big we can now tamper with the glow effect so the first uh, process that I go through is I just switch across the blends I just try and see what one suits best before changing any of the intensities the thre threshold and the per channel intensity so this is pretty much what I expect is going to change it however I do like to look through the blend first going to leave it to screen so now we're going to work on intensity threshold and radius what we do is we reduce the threshold actually and we get more of this yellowish hue instead of red So now that we've done that, I'm going to finally go back to blend and just see which one works the best now. Okay, so in the end, I've chosen add. I think add looks really cool. Okay, so if we just watch it back. Yes, I, I do really like that. However, I think there's one more finishing touch that you probably do that would make this a little bit better now we can just quickly hit that and search up the light flare so it's under lights and flares light flares okay so on hotspot center all that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click the keyframe button and it's no different than the masking if anything it's a lot easier so go ahead and click your next frame move it next frame move it Okay, now that we've done that, as you can see, it follows it quite neatly. We're going to go ahead and change the type of flare. So again, now that, we, now that we've chosen R1, we can go ahead into editor, just have a look at that. So it's not too bad, you can, if you really want to, you can change the blend. I'm going to have a look at just which ones, uh, don't make it seem like it's just been slapped on there, I want that to maybe be like an overlay, I want it a lot less uh, bright basically just so then it's not too obvious that that is uh, just slapped on there basically. Okay so far my favourite is add, however I will change up the rays so we can actually do that. I want to change up the length here, I don't want it spanning across the entire screen here just because I think it's a little bit dramatic. So I'm just going to go ahead and make it a bit, a bit smaller and we're going to keep the artifacts there. That's the end of this video. If you did enjoy, like and subscribe. And if you still have any questions about this video or how to do a certain thing if I under explained anything, uh, don't forget to comment. I will try my best to reply. Uh, if you don't still understand it, I will 
trying my best to make a follow-up video and uh, work on anything that you don't understand.